Hello learners, welcome to the discussion on language in National Curriculum Framework 2005. Learners, National Curriculum Framework 2005 as the name goes and the year goes was brought out in the year 2005 after a lot of discussions, debates, deliberations across the country. It was a curriculum after five years in 2000, the year 2000 National Council of Educational Research and Training and CRT brought out a curriculum. Then 2005 it was revised and changed. So let us have a discussion on how national curriculum framework which is still in implementation uh, deals with advocates language education, language pedagogy in school and in teacher education. Learners, I am Meghanathan from the Department of Education in Languages in CERT, New Delhi. Being a prospective teacher, I am going to be a teacher, let us say, all of you are. We need to understand how curriculum planning happens in this country, as well as in general, what is curriculum planning and curriculum, why curriculum is revised periodically and curriculum is renewed. And what changes take place situating to the time and the context in which it happens. We are in the year 2021. We have in before us the national education policy based on which national curriculum framework will be developed, revised. Syllabi and textbooks materials will be developed. So curriculum framework in Countries like India, where a dem federal democracy, we develop curriculum framework which is adapted or adapted with modifications by the state regional governments and school systems like CBSC, ICAC, others. So it is a framework, not a curriculum, it is a curriculum framework. Then what does national curriculum framework, henceforth I will call it NCF 2005 talks about language education. Before we delve into discuss how language education is envisaged in NCF 2005, let us see the guiding principles of National Curriculum Framework 2005, NCF 2005. Look at it, after a lot of deliberations, discussions with the 21 national focus groups under three broader categories, systemic issues, content areas, curricular areas and national concerns. Under three categories, uh, NCRT formulated 21 national focus groups and later uh, that emerged into national steering committee headed by Professor Eshwal, eminent educationist. Even the position papers were uh, full of educationist teachers, people from rural schools and these five guiding principles emerged. One, first of all, connecting knowledge to life outside the school. So how can an, an educational exercise, school, can connect the knowledge which exists outside the school? Then ensuring that learning is shifted away from rote learning, lot of rote learning burden on children, then enriching school curriculum to provide for overall development rather than textbook centric teaching. We know that most teaching uh, sometimes result, most of the time results in whatever is in the textbook is taught and tested. And of course, uh, breaking or liberating the, the hard examinations, so, so there should be flexible examinations. Then look at the fifth one. It is for the democratic country, nurturing and overriding identity informed by caring concerns within a democratic polity. See, education, school education has to develop people into a democratic citizens. I, I should be able to live in a democratic country. That means I should be able to know my duties, my, my, my rights and duties and duties to the nation country, people, government uh, institutions and my, my own brethren, I mean my, my, my own neighbors, friends and my own family. 
So, this is what uh, NCF 2005 took up with as guiding principles. So, let us let's take a look at what the language education says. Uh, what does the NCF 2005 talk about language education? Language teaching needs to be multilingual not only in terms of number of languages offered to children, but also in terms of evolving strategies that would use multilingual classroom as a resource. Very interesting. There are two aspects talked about here, participants, multilingual education, language teaching should be envisaged as multilingual education, not only the number of languages taught and the three language formula or the school system is even um, ready to offer more than three languages, mother tongue, the state language, Hindi or English, many, many languages. That is one aspect of language learning. Another is language teaching and learning of languages as strategies to use as a resource for learning languages as well as other subjects. That means language across curriculum perspective as well as language as an instrument to learn language itself and other subjects. Then look at it, home languages of children should be the medium of learning. So, we have been arguing that mother tongue based multilingualism and mother tongue has to be the medium of instruction. So, here NCF calls for home languages. In very few cases, home language uh, may be different from the mother tongue. And so, home language is equivalent to first language. So, home language should be the medium. Then, children will receive multilingual education from the outset. Three language formula needs to be implemented in its spread, promoting multilingual communicative abilities for a multilingual country. Why should I learn many languages in a country? This country is multilingual. How, how is it multilingual? Go to any Indian classroom or any Indian street, you will be finding more than two languages, one language at least, more than one language. And it will be difficult for us to find in a street or in a classroom with all learners knowing only one language. It is impossible in this country, but it is possible in European countries and some part of USA and some parts of uh, uh, Soviet Union, I mean erstwhile Soviet Union, today is Russia. But in Africa and countries like ours, you will not be able to find one language only in the classroom. So, the, the three language formula, learning three languages but multilingual communicative ability. I will have to communicate with another language speaker in English, in Hindi, Tamil, many, many languages. And NCF 2005 also advocated study of classical and foreign languages may be introduced at later, later stages. It means at the higher secondary level. NCF 2005 further exemplifies, clarifies how multilingual education could be realized. Multilingual perspective addresses the concern of language and culture and the pedagogical principles of moving from known to unknown. So, how do we learn? We learn unfamiliar things from familiar things. So, I will learn my mother tongue or through my mother tongue very well, the other languages as well as foreign ideas. So, you know, let us go back to the guiding principles in which it says, look at it, connecting knowledge to life outside the classroom. This is how language education moves on to achieve in NCF 2005. So, multilingual perspective addresses the concern of language, culture and pedagogical principles of moving from known to unknown. And we are all learning English. English has become almost like common second language across the country. In some cases, it, it, it's becoming a first language kind of thing, but of course, it's a second or third language. But what is the purpose of learning English language? Of course, we need to have uh, English language because most higher education and, and uh, jobs are abroad uh, are available in English. So, but NCF looks at it in a different manner that is essential. The aim of English teaching is the creation of multilinguals who can enrich all our languages. This has been an abiding vision. Means 
Why should I learn English? In order to become multilingual, in order to support my languages, other languages, Indian languages, uh, English became. It's not that English is going to take away the place of Indian languages. It is going to support the English. learning teaching of indian languages we will see this aspect further the role of english later now what what does a language curriculum look like in ncf 2005 here are the goals of language curriculum a cohesive language policy based on guiding principles of language teaching acquisition which allows a variety of implementations suitable to local needs and resources and which provides illustrative models for use look at it there are many things in this statement one is a cohesive language policy curricular policy means it has to be connecting every aspect of life every aspect of education every language itself language learning or language acquisition which allows variety of see there cannot be flat one way of implementing all, all uh, at all levels the education policy and edu uh, curriculum itself so a particular region may like to introduce the language later particular region may like to emphasize on the literature uh, of uh, the area more than the other <coughs> so variety of implementations suitable mean the strategy may differ and it depends on the needs of the people to learn the language and curriculum and the resources available suppose there are no material textbooks so we need to develop them and they have to be illustrative models for use means meaning a particular context let us say that in in mizoram language curriculum is introduced mizo is there english language is there hindi language is there and some more languages are there many um, tribal minor languages are there how this can be implemented suiting to the local needs textbooks have to be developed teachers have to be developed so many such things so it's a cohesive mean but it has to take everybody all included that's what cohesive policy so now let's go back to uh, again english language ncf made a very very vibrant statement very emphatic statement english does not stand alone that's what we are worried about now english is taking over other indian languages in school and higher education so let's reduce that how can english what role english can play along with other indian languages so it has to be one among the indian languages regional in regional medium schools how can children's other languages strengthen english teaching learning how will i how will english teaching learning benefit from the teaching learning of other languages that's what mother tongue to other tongue then in english medium schools how can other indian languages be valorized reducing the perceived hegemony of english meaning in english medium schools you must have seen uh, and you must uh, you must have yourself undergone this experience english is given all importance and other languages get get the back seat no so how indian languages also get the prominence as english is given so the hegemony of the dominance of english has to be reduced in schooling the life in schooling and teaching learning processes and so uh, so that indian languages feel at ease and get their due recognition and in relation to other subjects how language across the curriculum perspective so maybe in some school systems like navodaya vidyalaya samvidhi kendriya vidyalaya sangathan schools uh, mathematics and science are taught in english social science taught in the in hindi so how uh, what is the rational behind it because children feel that uh, the school systems have decided uh, because uh, this higher education in science and mathematics mostly available in indian uh, in in english and children will be find it difficult so let's teach them but at the same time social science uh, can be learned its mo most of the theory and events uh, so it can be learned in their mother tongue in in, in hindi and this this is even questioned very well uh, rightly so but uh, this is one and english is learned in 
sorry, other subjects learned are learned. Other subjects are learned in English. How can we reduce that? Uh, how can we benefit from that? Meaning, when the science teacher teaches, when when geography teacher teaches, mathematics teacher teaches, when he or she teaches through English or in any language, children also learn language through the subjects. This is called. and language plays a role centrality of language in learning the mathematics subject science subject so this is called language across the curriculum so ncf 2005 calls for language across the curriculum perspective so what kind of pedagogy ncf is attempting to promote engaging pedagogies with language rich environment when i learn language the language has to be seen in my ambience creating language rich environment through books in the in primary school we can create lot of uh, language written uh, on the walls door so the children notice language so we call it language rich environment books and teachers speaks the language children are made to uh, understand and do group work pair work those kinds of thing so this is one major thing uh, ncf 2005 advocates then trans languaging as pedagogy using the languages available in the classroom for teaching learning of languages as well as content subjects it's very very interesting how can a teacher use all the languages of children teacher need not know all the languages of children it's not possible for one teacher to know five six languages uh, if possible uh, he can learn later uh, or in due course but not necessarily it's not his job to learn languages it's to teach so but he can make use of the languages available in the classroom suppose he explains something he tells something one child speaks in the language is common to all another child may uh, say it in his or her language which few children know or there may be only one child he may be given due time to speak in his language so that boosts up the energy self confidence of children that's what trans languaging let me let me give an illustration in trans languaging what happens is when children one story is narrated by the teacher or one child in one language and the common language and other children try to translate it say it in their languages and they may and 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 this is one and one part of the story may be said in english and a, another part is may be said in hindi and third part may be said by some other language if it is in tamil or in tamil or in punjabi it is uh, punjabi it is punjabi uh, west bengal it's bangla kind of thing so trans languaging as pedagogy this is what uh, uh, ncf 2005 advocates then what many strategies uh, uh, in ncf advocates recommends one of them is storytelling not story teaching we may recall when we were children our teacher used to tell stories and uh, make it kind of teaching and uh, tell that moral of the story now we are saying that tell the story as language input let children get get involved embedded into the imagination of this, this imagination and the events in the story and the language and doing nothing just telling the story and maybe one or two activities and project work four or five children come together create a poster for the village go and interview people write and report it those kind of strategies learner work in and work with language learners work in language and work with language see language learning takes place the time spent in the language is ample ample time is given to children to read write and interact speak that that's what we call it learners work in and work with language it leads to collaborative learning ncf also advocates critical pedagogy on issues which are relevant to their age and time and politically socially relevant and this this are the times that we need to make our children to think critically to and to come to an informed understanding on matters issues whether science politics literature what else and social life so this is called critical pedagogy so given to situation let children analyze oh pros and cons of it rights and wrongs of it come to their own understanding and conclude for example nuclear energy many such things even uh, the covid pandemic many such things so they can take with data empirical evidence analysis 
coming to an informed understanding. Look at it. So we have seen pedagogy. Let's look at it. Who is the learner in NCF 2005? Language learner. NCF 2005 recognizes, recognized learner as constructor of knowledge. What is the constructor of knowledge? Teacher teaches, learner learns and learner makes, makes out his own ways and means with his previous experience, societal experience, language. So he, he learns, he is the learner of language, means creator of his own language, creator of his own knowledge. It doesn't mean that uh, he, uh, he, 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 he is uh, le learning, creating everything new like scientist or so social scientist maybe. But at the same time, when he understands an idea, he feels that he is creating on his own, that the involvement. We said no, work with and work in language. Then learner's identity is recognized as autonomous learner, learner with good self-esteem and diversified multilingual multicultural learners. This is very important for a language teacher to understand. And language is also an instrument for attitudinal development. How attitudinal development develop, uh, develop happens? And you read stories, you read literature, you, you see the etiquettes, the language use in context. Then you develop and that is why it is generally said people who know uh, many more languages are better, uh, uh, means under, uh, they understand society much better and uh, they live much more harmoniously than uh, monolingual speakers. Uh, there are some uh, evidences also. So attitudinal development and developing a critical perspective, learners, we have discussed this in critical pedagogy, so an, a situation, an idea is given to us. How can I move to understand and come to a ki kind of, again I am saying, an informed conclusion, be it political, social, scientific and science related or language, literature, anything. So uh, let us have a debate in the classroom, nuclear energy is good or bad, whether uh, voting uh, age to be lowered to 16 years, now it is 18 years or to enhance to uh, uh, 21 years or should learners be allowed to have an internet account, email account before the age of uh, 16 or 18 and I think in the United States of America uh, in, uh, email account is not permitted before the age of 18. We can have a discussion and how far social media is good. So crit let children develop a critical perspective through language learning, through reading of text and, and so on. Look at it. Then look at the resources available. What kind of resources? Input rich communicational en environments are prerequisite for language learning, meaning children will be able to learn language when they are given some input in terms of texts and narratives, teachers language and learners interaction. That's what NCF believes. Then meaningful language exposure through inputs, otherwise it leads to burden of comprehension when language is taught as a subject and many context language is taught as not as a language as a subject. Then what kind of text and narratives NCF calls for? Contemporary text, narratives in terms of themes and language. See learners are learning in 2020-21. They should know the contemporary Hindi, contemporary English first, then move on to understand whatever they want to understand. So give the themes which are relevant today. Authentic materials, what are authentic materials? So, our authentic materials are those written by someone who never thought that it would be part of textbook. So newspaper articles, stories, uh, naturally written text are brought into textbooks. Songs, rhymes, translations from Indian languages. Then there is an attempt to uh, learner created texts, learn from learners lives. So ch children's literature, learners themselves create some stump text that, that is brought into textbook. And, but at the same time, learners should be exposed to all kind of uh, text, forms of text like that, you know, prose, poetry, newspaper article, travelogue, poetry, uh, play. So infographic, all those texts should be brought into textbook and, and in the classroom. Then what is at the end of the day language learning is through this text. They are negotiating their language, the text for meaning rather than just learning the information. So texts are instruments to make children to make meaning, critically understand the perspectives. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, they understand not only themselves and learn language but also the world. 
this is what language education is uh, actually aiming at. So, how can a teacher be supported through other means, the, the principal, the school system, and the, and the state itself, complementing, supplementing teacher inputs? Interactive radio project created audio programs. There are many, many, many states, uh, including NCRT and universities like uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University. They create a lot of audio video for uh, teachers and learners, particularly teachers uh, and of course learners. Story reading as opposed to story teaching. I said just reading the story to learners. Regular story reading triggers the acquisition process in children. If children are told stories and later they read stories, language learning is enhanced and it's supported. Then shared reading means four or five children sit together, our whole class, the big book it's read and through reading cards. We have developed a lot of reading cards and talking books, audio books. NCRT has converted all its textbooks, science, mathematics, every textbook into audio book, talking book uh, that are being used by teachers and learners. So this is how a teacher can be supported. What kind of language assessment is required? NCF 2005 envisages continuous assessment. That means it's not uh, assessment is not one time assessment. It has to be continuous and it has to be school based and instruments like portfolio assessment, learners are part of assessment process, not simply they are assessees. They are not simply the pe people who are evaluated, they also be using like peer, peer reviews and their own assignment they read and they mark it and later teacher looks at it. So they become part of assessment process itself, not simply being assessed, getting assessed. Project work and other activities as activities for assessment. So five children come together, they do a project and it is being evaluated and, and grades are awarded according the, to the contribution. And it should be, NCF 2005 envisages, it should be regular school-based assessment, not simply one-time paper pencil assessment. Learners, there are lots of things NCF 2005 talks about, advocates, recommends. But it's up to the school systems and states and teachers to implement it. How will we, how, how will we do it? Is the million dollar question. It was in, it was in, it started, it was getting implemented in 2005. Now we are in 2020. Let me tell you as a member of faculty from National Council of Education Research and Training in CRT, uh, almost all the states have revised their curriculum and te new textbooks have been developed. Lot of activities, interactive activities have been brought into assessment processes have changed and storytelling like activities have, uh, have gained uh, ground accepted as pedagogy and project work has become a commonplace thing, a regular thing in sc school now. Continuous assessment is in practice. This is what NCF 2005 uh, actually envisaged in the year 2005 or 6. Then the first one generation of textbooks, then later uh, slight revisions and almost all the states uh, have now uh, all the states have now revised the textbook, teachers that have been trained and systems like Kendriya Vidyala Sangatan, Navodhya Vidyala Samiti uh, are, uh, have made teacher training as a regular every year practice two in two cycles. NCRT also has launched a lot of online offline training programs and NCRT has done a kind of nationwide uh, NISTA program, National Initiative of uh, Teacher Education, uh, Teacher in Service Professional Development in which 30 lakh teachers uh, NCRT itself trained and, and later those master trainers, resource persons trained their state. Almost every teacher has been now trained. So this is how a national curriculum framework uh, envisaged and language education found its major place in the national curriculum framework. Let me give you uh, learners, before I thank you, two or three tasks. First of all, you may visit the NCRT website or any Government of India website. You will find National Curriculum Framework 2005. Take a look at it fully, if not language portion. And two more documents are available along with National Curriculum Framework. One is teaching of Indian languages position paper. Another is teaching of English. Please take a look at them. Lot more discussed about language policy, language education, language pedagogy, language assessment, 
language teacher education many more and it will be of a great learning for you and write a commentary on at least one of them as your task which i would like to suggest learners i hope that you will have been able to understand what in ncf 2005 national curriculum framework 2005 uh, was was envisaging uh, in language education hope that you would be able to read it uh, again if you have read it or if you have not read it please visit ncert website and read it and reflect let me thank you for having been part of this discussion we'll meet in some other theme later till then take care